Someone once asked me, uh, if I could make uh, a movie about one of the church fathers, who would it be? And I answered without hesitation, it would be Ignatius of Antioch. Why Ignatius of Antioch? Well, first of all, because he gives us the most detailed uh, view of the early church. And by early, I mean very early. Because Ignatius died as an old man around 107 AD. As an old man who had been a Christian for a long time, he likely had contact with some of the apostles, at least St. Peter, who was his predecessor as Bishop of Antioch. Ignatius had an interesting life. He was bishop in the city of Antioch, the place where the disciples were first called Christians. So it's historically a very important place in the church's life. He also lived a long time in the church and he saw the church grow from probably just a handful of people to something substantial, something that even the Romans could see as a threat to the social order because it was so radical. It was causing people to rethink life and rethink how they interacted with others, rethink what it meant to live in a family, all of these things that are so important to a society. So Ignatius was a teacher and a preacher and a leader and a successor of the apostles. And at some point, he was outed for this. And he was condemned to death. But since he was such an important figure in the church, the Romans wanted to make an example of him. So they transported him from Antioch and Syria across land and across sea so that he could die in Rome at the Colosseum as a spectacle, as an example for everyone to see. But you know, you didn't just hop on a plane and get there. And it, you didn't get there quickly at all. He had to go again by land and sea, by military escort. They would go into a city and they would make a public display of him so that he could be humiliated, so that he could be embarrassed as the man who's going to be condemned to die. But you know what? The attempt backfired because he went and he was made a public display and the church turned out to see him because he was a rock star in their world. He was a celebrity and he was an icon of the courage of Jesus Christ, of the self-offering of Jesus Christ. And so he came out and he preached to those people and he wrote letters to those churches on the stops along his way. At each and every place he would be brought out and he would give a word of comfort to the Christians and even the pagans who came out to jeer at him would have to admire what they saw and have to be attracted by it, I think. He wrote ahead to the Romans and he asked them not to do anything to stand in the way of his death, of his martyrdom. And he saw his martyrdom as a kind of Eucharist, as a participation in the Holy Mass that he had been offering through all of his years as bishop. He compared himself to the wine that's poured out as a libation. And he compared himself to the bread that's offered on the altar at Mass. He says that he wants to be ground like wheat in the teeth of the lions, so that he could be made pure bread for Christ. That's a beautiful self-offering that Ignatius made as a spectacle in a kind of public liturgy in the Colosseum in Rome, as part of these pagan rites, as part of this pagan entertainment. But yet, it was a public uh, entertainment that converted people. It converted the people who were onlookers because of, of his courage, because of his, his witness. We need to imitate him. Most of us will not be called to be martyrs in the circus. Most of us will not be called to be martyrs in that way. But every day we need to live our self-offering in imitation of Jesus Christ. Our Lord said, if you would come after me, take up your cross daily and follow me. Let's take up our cross daily and follow him and follow the good bishop that he gave us, the good example that he gave us by grace in Ignatius of Antioch, a father of the church. Mm -hmm.